I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic reactions. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this organic transformation, so if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This is a really cool reaction that's actually only a few steps, but importantly it relies on the use of a Lewis acid, so we can actually just reduce the amount of writing if we just write LA to indicate that we're using some sort of Lewis acid to perform this transformation. And the first thing that's likely to happen is actually that this alcohol at this position is likely to bind to that Lewis acid. So I'll just go ahead and draw in that this is gonna be coordinated to our Lewis acid. From here, what will happen is that the lone pair of electrons on our other oxygen will come and attack this carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde, which is gonna be very susceptible to nucleophilic attack. And this is gonna cause these pi electrons to come up. And if everything happens, happens all together, then what we can also consider is the fact that these lone pair of electrons on oxygen will actually come around and attack this position. And that's why we needed to coordinate this oxygen to the Lewis acid, which is going to make this oxygen partially positive, and thus making this position susceptible to nucleophilic attack. Because in doing so, this is also going to liberate this as a good leaving group. So we're forming a new carbon to oxygen bond, but we're actually losing a carbon to oxygen bond as well. And just to help us keep track of what's going on, I'm actually going to number these positions. So this is going to be position position one, this carbon will be position two, so then this one can be position three, this one can be position four, we'll say that this is position five, and this is position six. And I'll also start numbering on this aldehyde as well, and this is gonna be position seven, and this one is gonna be position eight. And this will help you keep track of what happens in the next transformation. So this forms a brand new six-membered ring where two of the positions on that ring are gonna be oxygen atoms, because remember we had an oxygen on this alcohol, which attacked carbon number seven, and this oxygen actually attacked carbon number Number two. So seven and two are going to become very close to one another. So then the rest of this molecule is still going to contain this cyclopropane ring on it, as well as we're going to contain this R group located at this position here. So this will be R1, and then on the other side is where we can find R2. So now I can relabel this so you can see where each of these carbons came from. So if this was position one, this is two, this is three, this is carbon number four, this was carbon number five, this was carbon number six, and this carbon is number seven, and this carbon is number eight. So as you can see, the oxygen, which we had directly adjacent to that cyclopropane ring is located here. It attacked carbon number seven, which is why it is attached at this position, and the oxygen that was attached to carbon number seven has attacked carbon number two. So that's how we ended up with this six-membered ring with this specific orientation. And from here, the Lewis acid that we're using can actually come and coordinate at this at this oxygen position again as well, which is gonna make this basically positively charged. And since this was positively charged, that's actually gonna help us flow some of these electrons through this system where these electrons will come down here and that's actually gonna open this ring where these electrons will come over to this oxygen to end up making it neutral. So this means that we open this ring and now we are left with position R1 here. Remember it is still located to carbon number two, which is here. Then we still have three, four, and that's where our cyclopropyl ring is gonna be. And then we have have our oxygen, which is still coordinated to the Lewis acid, which is why it is neutral. And then coming down this way, we have our oxygen, and now it is going to contain a carbon to oxygen double bond at this position, as well as our R2 group. And now this oxygen is going to be positively charged. So we've maintained our charge between these two different transformations. And now I can go in again and label these carbons as one, two, three, four five, six, and carbons number seven and eight are located at these positions. So the next what will occur is this Lewis acid will dissociate and that will cause these electrons to come down between the carbon and oxygen, which is actually gonna open up this cyclopropyl ring. So this strain three-membered ring can actually open up it now. And these electrons that were previously lo located between carbon four and five will actually come around and attack this carbonyl carbon with the positively charged oxygen because it's gonna be very electrophilic at that position. And this is also going to open up these pi electrons to being located on the oxygen, which ends up making it neutral. And then assuming that this Lewis acid dissociated, hopefully you'll see how we end up transforming this molecule into the final product. So notice we have positions one and two, which are located here. So I will actually label them as one and two again. Carbon number three is located here and carbon number four is located here. And notice that the oxygen now has a double bond to carbon number four, which is true in our final product as well. And then the neighboring carbons, which are gonna be adjacent to that, are gonna be six and then five. So this will become carbon number six, this is carbon number five, because the carbon number five position is what ended up attacking carbon number seven. So carbon number seven is located here, and this makes this carbon number eight. And then we have our oxygen, 
that splits this ring. And this is actually how we reclose that ring to make this cyclic system. And the reason that I identified each of these carbons is because without doing so, it's actually quite complicated to see how this tr transformation will occur to give us this overall final product. All mediated through the use of a Lewis acid, where the first step is gonna be coordination to this alcohol, which will allow us to do a nucleophilic attack of this carbon aldehyde position, which is actually going to also serve to allow this oxygen to come and do a nucleophilic or substitution reaction at this position, which will kick off this Lewis acid coordinated alcohol as a better leaving group. And then from here, that Lewis acid can come back and bind to one of the oxygen positions on our newly formed ring. But keeping track of all the different carbons at each step of the way is how you can actually follow along and see how this transformation occurs. And this is an important tip for anyone who's working out mechanisms that oftentimes if reaction look very complicated to you simply by following along the different carbons this should allow you to keep track of your transformations and I want to give a special shout out to Sasha Sundstrom or Dr. Sundstrom who is a fantastic chemist who also posed some really interesting mechanisms if you enjoyed this week's mechanism give it a thumbs up down below and for next week I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this organic reaction so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss out on another mechanism Monday I'll see you next week